Well, don't believe everything you heard. Most of it's been made up to make me look like I'm some kind of desperado. But the truth is, I grew up just like the rest of the boys here in Park City. My name is Patrick Coughlin. I was born June 1st, 1873 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. My Irish parents moved to Park City when I was just a kid. Unfortunately, when I was just 16 years of age, my father died of pneumonia, a very common disease here in Park City to die of. Well, from then on, I raised a bunch of mischief and raised some hell here in Park City with my friends, and most of them went to jail or reform school, but not me. The worst trouble I ever got into started one July afternoon when I stole some strawberries off of a peddler's cart on Main Street. Frank Kennedy and Fred George and I thought that it was a good idea. Oh, you should have seen that peddler running down the street after those strawberries. We ran down to the sporting houses on Heber Avenue and sold them to the madam. Well, Sheriff Harrington acted like we had robbed a bank. He wanted to charge us $20. Frank paid, but Fred and I, we were gonna lay low until Sheriff Harrington had something better to do than get after us. We borrowed a couple horses and headed out to a sheep camp. We were sleeping there one morning when we were woken up by gunfire. I peered out the wagon and there he was, Sheriff Harrington, pointing his rifle right at me. I didn't have a second to think, so all I did was pull the trigger on my Winchester. Oh, you should have seen it. That bullet hit his saddle horn and he jumped off the horse and ran into the woods about 40 feet and I shot up in the air a couple times to scare him off, and it sure enough worked. He headed right back to Park City. Now Fred and I knew we were really in trouble. We headed for Wyoming. On the way, we found a place to rest. A line shack about eight miles east of Echo. The sun wasn't up yet when we were woken again by gunfire. So all we could do is jump to the ground, and the bullets were flying through the walls. And all of a sudden, the gunfire stopped, and we heard somebody right away. Well, we peered through the door and we saw right there in the distance, somebody riding away, but also two men laying in the ground right outside. One of them, we didn't know, a wounded man that was still breathing. And the other man, we couldn't believe our eyes. It was Constable Stagg from Echo. We tried to help the wounded man, but we were no help. We found our horses and we headed off to Ogden. We read in a newspaper there that we were wanted and that all lawmen from Evanston and Utah were after us. And we found out that if we were turned ourselves in, we would be lynched. We had to keep running. We didn't know where to go. Maybe Nevada. The next morning, a couple of lawmen found us in City Creek Canyon and started shooting. We escaped narrowly, but lost our horses. A few nights later, we took a couple of horses we found outside of a bar in North Salt Lake City and headed west. We were south of Grantsville when a posse from Tooele find us hiding. When I came out, don't shoot, don't shoot, which was my last chance to not get shot. We were charged with murder and found guilty. Fred was sentenced life in prison and I was sentenced to die by a firing squad on the banks of Bear River in Rich County. My mother came to visit me in the Randolph jail the night before I died. Was I happy to see her? Oh yes I was. Father Galligan from St. Mary's was there till the end. And you know, I wasn't afraid. It may sound strange, but it felt like everything was alright. In my last statement, I got a lot off my chest. I've been treated with great kindness by my jailers, and I forgave everybody. And I wanted everybody to forgive me. Did I have any regrets? Well yes I did. Maybe not stealing those strawberries, and causing a lot of people a whole lot of grief. I died in the morning of December 15th, 1896. My mother was waiting for me in Evanston and we rode the midnight train back to Park City and here I lie today. Glenwood Cemetery is in desperate need of restoration of these fragile headstones and the cemetery grounds in which they rest. Please join Park City Museum's efforts to preserve these beautiful pieces of art while protecting and promoting our historical legacy. Donate by visiting the website below and be a part of keeping Park City's history alive. Thank you.